the final of the bowl. Switching to the smaller burr is a big part of the trick. Uh, we're going in here, and as you can remember, the big burr would only let you go down so far, and believe me, you don't want to dig. Sonic reports show this area here to here is thin. So we got to be careful from here to here. There's a big hump if you ever felt one of these. But what we got to do is go down on the bottom and come up to the taper we put in the guide. I'm putting pressure to the guide, not to the bow. I'm using a force push. That's how you do it. Then you come up and dance a little. To pull the trench out. This is what we're going to be doing, and then I'm going to be coming up here, pull rounding and bobtailing the guide, then barely touching this outskirt and blending it, and then we're going to turn it over. We got some bobtailing to do on this and the tip. I'll do that when the head's turned uh, in the reverse situation. I will say this: it's the hardest. I don't know if I've already said it. The hardest bowl job to do that I've ever done because there's so many little things in here that have to be just right in order to make this come out. I would like to point out this area right here. I have increased this area here to here. Almost, it, I'd say 25% over what it was stock. There was just nothing coming through. They were just squeezing this too hard. It's still going to swirl. It's still going to have it. But the swirl is going to be more noticeable in mid-RPM. Where this head would really shine for you guys who are pulling a lot of weight. Oh my gosh. Around 3,500 RPM if you had about... 4,000 pounds behind you, you would just think that uh, you got the greatest thing since sliced butter. Alright, so anyway, I just wanted to point out, this. wow, I wish I had another one stocked. You couldn't even get that through there. So, anyway, let's go ahead, finish contouring it, then I'll show you how I contour it on the short turn and blend the short turn radius on this head. It is really difficult, I don't mind. Alright. Back on these incredibly, incredibly time-consuming bowls. I thought I'd show you something. When you're going in here on this area, and you're doing the blending uh, from the rough, the one thing you want to do is contour this wing. Now, typically, I want to get any mark of casting off that levels it right here you want to spend some time and there's no quick way to do this what we got to do is form a radius on the end of that tit I believe that this could entirely have a lot to do with wet flow distribution so spend a little bit of time gnawing on it and then you got to just pull back and forth there's the straight wall side there's the curvature and you just want to go back and forth and roll it. Now, on the short turn on this, it can only go... Be very careful because you're in a thin area right there. So all we're trying to do is just lightly roll that. And then come back around and pull it right up to the edge of the 60 degree. But right here is the problem. rolled over right because this means everything here. I'd say if there's any area where shear or fuel fall fallout is going to occur, it's going to be right there. So make sure you get that rolled 
and it just, you know, there's no getting around the time involved. Like I said, this has ended up being the most difficult bowl job I've ever done to get it to lay in right, but I'm sure the results is going to be worth it. You got a very beautiful set of heads, Philip McCollum. I hope it works for you. Alright, we'll catch on up. Now, on the exhaust side, what we're doing here is one side you're going to be able to take and put pressure on it, which will be this side. Watch what happens. I'm staying close to the guide. And then I can come up and take meat off of it right there and blend it. But on this side, you can't go in there and use your digger to dig because you're going to pull too much into that wall. We'll have to go on this side to a lot thinner burr to go in there and clean that up and pull the radius of the roof to form the bullet nose of the guide. If I had to say this about it on porting, it's all about which shape to use. So far we've used these three different ones and then there's a ball on there too. But it's all about choosing the right shape cutter with the right cutting radius. We'll go more into that later. But now look at it, see? That is absolutely beautiful. She's pulling in really good. That ought to kick us quite a few CFMs on that exhaust. That other side, like I told you, I'll have to go in there and use a different cutter. Okay. We're now switched to the finger, and what we're doing here is there's a little shaded part I was telling you where the eggs couldn't get to it, and now we're going to go in here. Wow, see how nice of a job that does? And it takes them radiuses right out of it. Be careful when you're doing this not to let your carbide come down there and hit the seam or you'll uh, for sure enough be in a mess. But this right here finishes the roll on the top. Alright, now let's get a straight in look at it. Look how nice now and clean. The finger has went in there and I've already went through most of the ports, blended them all. We're now ready for the stoning on the exhaust, but there is a little bit of touch up work on the intake port we're going to do with our mighty finger here. I'm going to show you that and then it'll be time to stone the exhaust, do a mild polish on them. They're not near as important as the combustion chamber. And our beloved head job is done, and we got to do the guides and the valve. And this part here, I just wanted to show you once again. We're switching to the straight one by what I call the finger, and we're going to get down here. See that dark area? All you're doing with this is just going in there and... Um, Pulling in the dark area where, you know, the small egg couldn't get in the corner. Sorry guys, God it's so hard to, to film this. I'm trying to let you see it, but you can see it's done now. And it just pulls the radius out of it and gets that out so that it's got a nice beautiful shape. I go all the way through and I touch them and pull them right to the gasket lines on the head. This is your final. When this right here is done, that's it. You're home free. All right, that's all of this. Get ready for the next section. Okay. Now that I've started pulling it in, of course, with my finger, and we're at the end, the last thing is using a pickup point to make sure we get what we want. Now I'm at an inch, there's always one side more than the other and what I try to do is balance them out. 
there and then there amazingly enough it took carrying it to one inch or a little bit over width to balance every one of these out so that I have the same column of air moving in uh, when it was stock I measured it it was um, 1825 so it got moved about 175 thousandths that just about took that atrocious hump that it hits right in there and out now some of y'all will say well this is going to bring the power up the rpm a little bit yes it will it will pull it up a little not too bad maybe about four to five hundred rpm but it needs that to match the rest of the part to get that swirl really kicking where when philip is on the interstate and he's going about 70 miles an hour he's going to get big gas mileage gains over what he was getting before because of this if I had to pick an area that I tried to design this for was him traveling between 55 to 70 miles an hour and in that range it's going to pick up good, have good gas mileage, but I wanted to take a minute to show you how I try to go in here and straighten that out and get them as close to being equal as I can without busting through to the push rod so anyway we'll get back on that now that the walls have all been moved I actually had to switch and go back to the cutter just on this one spot to balance it out because it was like this it was totally crooked and then I had to straighten it out so anyway I'm back doing my blending and finish this up and then the porting part of this episode will be done okay all the porting, the grinding, the polishing, everything that has to do with a die grinder on the head's been done. I thought I'd put the manifold up because uh, this is part of the head bites performance package, if you will. Not only the heads and the manifold, but a head bites custom profile cut cam, one off designed for my specs for the throttle body heads to work with the manifold and the header system. Let's get some close-up shots of the final port work on the heads. Well, with all the glare, it's not so easy to do. I would like to point out that the uh, exhaust ports, like the combustion chambers, were finished to a uh, 440 grit finish with the buffs. Let's see if we can get a better shot of the center. And blended really well. Uh, the roof was raised a little bit, maybe about 60 thousandths, but the width with the 1404 is what we got. Notice you can still see the scribe lines on the bottom. I do not in any way go in there and fool with that. Man, I've got a beautiful short turn roll, a radius on the exhaust ports. Um, if it hadn't been for the throttle body deal and the computer sensors, I probably would have filled them aluminum crossovers. I don't know how that would have affected it, but um, anyway, let's look. This is, uh, I'm trying to find my footage. I actually showed how and when I'd done it. And uh, after I sandblasted the head thoroughly and cleaned it, I epoxy coated the whole top of the head, about three layers. And uh, as you can see right here, these are the economical screw-in studs. While they don't have the wrench head, it's still a screw-in stud. I did this for about half the price and got the Pioneer screw studs that'll screw in. The kind you have to have two locking nuts and you jam them and lock them down and the heads were surfaced. Let's take a look on over to the combustion chambers. Okay, now like I always do all my heads, the intake port is left in a rough finish, carbide rough. Although it is a single carbide cross cut, they are done. And the exhaust ports, bottle nose, just like the intakes, rounded to the 440 grit finish. And I just can't tell you how much of a battle at them bowls were. I, that is really a lot more work than what you can imagine. A tremendous amount. When you use math and the go-no gauges and figure out what you're going to do to get them to cross-section out, from here all the way around the bowl and come up. I mean, this thing was just a disaster from GM. All right, and don't forget all of our combustion chamber mods, unshrouding the intake area, okay? And finally, the heads were surfaced. I also took a sand roll after surfacing and rolled around uh, 
120 grit around the edges. You can just take your hands and go right across it. It's all smooth to the touch. No chance of detonation. All right, that right there is going to conclude pretty much. Let's get one more shot of the intake side from the flame. Notice that I even uh, do the water ports. I scribe the lines and go in there and really port that. That ain't no joke. I really go in there and open that up so I got a good water return. And then right there, the intake ports. Um, like I said, I really concentrated on shaping and width. Let me get a straight shot. That's about as straight as I can get it. I could play here and play with this camera. All sorry, guys. I know that bugs you, um, but I got it all lined up with a 1205. Pretty much a straight shot till it begins its swirl and its twist. So, like I said, right now at this point, I just thought I'd give you an overview. I'm going to go into this turkey right here and really carve it out because there's a lot of work actually to be done on that manifold because it's an extremely small port. There is no doubt going to be a lot of work involved here. Thank you, Elder Brock, for leaving me the meat in the intake manifold to do it and come up. When I carve that thing to a 1205 and get its shape and open up the barrels, man, we're going to have a one heck of a torque monster from Hades here. So anyway, just going back over it, everything's complete at this point. Now we're ready for the last three things, which are bronze guides, the four angle valve job, and then I do pressure test these heads to 60 pounds and spray them with dishwashing soap. Anything above a stage three gets that because if I do have any kind of leak, I have ways to repair it. Now's the way to do it. And I watch as the epoxy coating on the inside of the heads is foolproof. I've been never had a problem with them leaking if I had to do it, but I don't think I have a problem there. Anyway, on to the next part, and then there'll be the conclusion of this TBI performance port job stage level four.